Hi friends, this is Anna with Scrapping, Stamping, and Stuff. And as you can tell from what you can see right now, we're going to have some fun with markers today. We are having a video about coloring therapy. Does anybody here like some coloring therapy? I, I'll be honest, I used to not be someone who thought they really liked to color. And the moment my hands hit these alcohol markers and I started using them, I fell in love. So I'm going to do kind of an all-inclusive video here today to share all of the basics that you're going to need to know to get started with Stampin' Blends alcohol markers. So first I want to tell you what are alcohol markers. So it is an alcohol-based solution in these markers that has dye suspended in the alcohol, whereas regular markers that you think about that you know, an average marker out there is going to be water-based. These are alcohol-based. So as a result, these colors can be blended by using either other alcohol markers, or you can actually blend them just with rubbing alcohol as well, which is something to keep in mind. So how you use these markers is a little bit different from an average marker, but the resulting appearance is completely different. It is a night and day difference in the resulting image. And I'm going to bring this in. So all of these samples I have here I colored with our Stampin' Blends markers. I'm going to say right now, I know they're not perfect and you're going to see that as you watch, watch along. You're going to find some imperfections here. But I just wanted to show you this is a leaf I colored with regular alcohol-based markers. All of the rest of these are these alcohol markers. So I'm sure right now you can see a big difference in the appearance. So what do we use these for? Um, coloring sketches, the pre-printed designs if you like to color. My specialty, as many of you know, is card making and scrapbooking, all the paper crafts. So these markers can be used for a lot of different purposes. So let's talk about some of the benefits, which I'm sure you can see just by looking at these. Using these markers, you can get lifelike shading for a true three-dimensional appearance. And the colors are just so, I think my favorite thing is the colors are just so saturated and rich looking that they're just gorgeous. So it's a lot of fun and if you're somebody who does your artwork or your crafting and it sort of gives you a little self-esteem boost when you get done because it makes you feel good because you just made something awesome, these markers are something you need in your collection because they will absolutely do that for you. Let's talk about a few things you need to know before you get started. The paper, first of all, the paper you use is very important, okay? I'm not going to suggest using something like printer paper or notebook paper, okay? There's a lot of ink going to come out of these markers to allow all that blending to happen. You need something thicker. So I have played around with Stampin' Up's three white cardstocks. We have our thick white cardstock, our standard, and our shimmery white. And... I know different people have different preferences, so my recommendation is to you to, to you is to play around with them and decide what your personal favorite is. I know some people love the shimmery white, some people love the thick. Honestly, I think my favorite is the regular white. That's what these three pages are here is samples I stamp so I stamp a lot of the same images on these three different cardstocks this is my thick white cardstock this is my regular standard white cardstock and this one down here is my shimmery white now ignore this one right here if you're looking at that thinking that that didn't work out well because I tried something different on that and it didn't work but that's not because of it's not because it's the shimmery white cardstock so Maybe right now you can see one that you think worked out the best. I don't really have one that I love or absolutely don't love. So uh, try different card stocks. Decide what your favorite is. Now, what the material that you're using for your printed images is important because some will 
smear or blur when you use these markers over them. So if you are making cards, scrapbooking, you're going to want to use Memento ink. We have Stampin' Up! offers the black and saddle brown colors, and the brown gives a completely different look from the black, so keep that in mind. So Memento ink is great if you like to draw or sketch. Pencil is fine with these markers, and like I mentioned, printer ink works fine. Now, if you're using some kind of printed image and you're not sure if the markers will bleed, cause it to bleed or not, if you want to test it out without using one of your markers and risking that it's going to bleed into your marker, you can use a cotton swab with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and rub that over there. Just see if it blurs or bleeds before you actually try your markers on it. The other thing you want to keep in mind, this is important, you need some good absorbent scrap paper on your work surface. So these are going to bleed through, okay? We need to get a lot of ink there in there, like I mentioned, to be able to get them to blend. So you need to make sure you put something protective down so that it doesn't end up on your kitchen table or something else important. Stampin' Up's grid paper is perfect as an absorbent layer under your work surface. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. Let's talk about how to use these. And I'm going to grab this sample right here. I have been looking at these leaves and I am excited to color one with you right now. So before I start coloring, let me mention there are a million ways to color. There are arguments about the right way and the wrong way, the pattern of the stroke of your marker. There, there are lots of different ideas out there. So again, play around with it. See what you like. So I really encourage you to start, you're going to want to start from the outside of your image and work in. This really does work best to allow it to blend the best. So one of the common ways of doing this is to color your entire image, or at least a large part of your image, in a lighter, in your lightest color. So here I am using Daffodil Delight. Now you can go back in and start to add in your darker colors, okay? So this is a light pumpkin pie, and I'll talk a little bit about our colors and these markers, the, our offerings for these markers here after I finish coloring. So I'm going to add in quite a bit of pump, that light pumpkin pie. You... You can work, as you can see, I am working from lightest to darkest, but there are some people who like to work from darkest to lightest, and that is okay. Whatever, you're, whatever works best for you is great, so just go with that. Okay, I'm going to add in a little bit of red down here, and then I am going to come in and go back and start shading and blending. Now I'm going to go back back towards my lighter colors. So I'm going to come in between this pumpkin pie color that I added on and those darker colors, the red, the cherry cobbler, and there are different ways of doing this. Some people like to use a swirling motion. When I started, that's probably what I usually did. I still do quite a bit. You can also use, which a lot of people feel works better for the blending, more like a feathering motion where you start in the darker area and as you get to the lighter area, you kind of lighten up a little bit so that it's not applying as much ink. Now I have my lighter pumpkin pie. I'm going to do that same thing. Start in the darker area and as I go outwards I am going to lift up a little bit so that it applies a little bit less ink into that lighter area. 
Now when you start, you can start by just coloring an image. And I really encourage you to do that. Just color an image and see how it looks. Then go in and add a little bit of dark. So maybe you start, if you're starting with this leaf, which is not the simplest of options, uh, but you can go in and just add like one color in these veins and just work on blending that. You don't have to start with this many colors. Okay, now I don't remember if I started with the light or the dark daffodil light. I think I started with the dark. That's what I have right now. So I am going to attempt to finish my blending right here with this. So again, I'm going into where those darker areas are and just blending out towards the lighter. As you have noticed, I have been using the brush tip of this. I'll talk about the tips in just a second. The, there are two tips on these markers and they have different purposes. So I will show you that in just a moment, okay? So here is my first sample. I will color in the stem and you can see that. So let's look at that in comparison to that first one I did with the water-based markers and take a look at that difference. That is just nowhere near the same effect. I just love the realism and the shading and the beauty that you get with these markers. So let's talk about the Stampin' Blends markers. I meant to share this a little bit ago and I got so excited about coloring I forgot so we'll do it right now. So here is the Stampin' Up! catalog. This is the 2020 annual catalog. I'm on pages 42 and 43. And here you can see all of the colors that Stampin' Up! offers in our inks, our card stocks, and our other products. So for each color collection, down here this bottom line is the Stampin' Blends Combo Pack. So what is the Combo Pack, you ask? When you get them, you get two colors in the Combo Pack. So this is Cherry Cobbler. You get a Dark Cherry Cobbler and a Light Cherry Cobbler. So since you get two in a pack, that automatically means you're going to be able to use those two markers to blend them together. They make a really nice pair to shade, say, an apple and get your lighter part of the apple and the darker part of the apple. So I have, I believe, 13 packs, 13 sets of my markers here that you can see. And I believe we offer 39 of these colors. So we have a huge color selection to take a look at. And having all the colors, I, I do not have all of these. And I am thinking they're going to be on my list soon because I've been having so much fun that now I want all of the colors. So let's take a look at one of these up close. Here is one of our Bermuda Bay markers. So I told you they have two tips. Here is the brush tip that I was using when I colored that leaf. This is the tip I find that I prefer for the most part because this one allows for a little bit better blending with a little bit less work than the other. It does, it covers a greater area at one time. Here we have the... Now I put lotion on right before my video and now my hands are slippery. So this is the bullet tip. This one, as you can see, is smaller. So this is better for detailed work where you don't want to get ink outside of your lines. This one does put down a more concentrated flow of color. So that's why sometimes I find it's a little bit harder to blend because it's just so concentrated. So if I put a line of a darker color down with the bullet tip, it's a little bit harder to blend out than if I use a line with the brush tip. Let's bring this leaf back in. And I want to give you a few tips to remember as you're doing this. Some of these are mistakes to avoid. Some of them are just tips in general. So one is you want to stay in from the edges. 
you don't want to color all the way to the line because these markers do bleed outward slightly. So as you learn and play around with it, you learn to stop just inside of that line. And typically it's going to bleed out just to that line. You can see a few little spots where I have gone outside of the lines, but not too many. Also, you don't want to oversaturate your paper if you keep coloring and coloring and coloring. It is going to cause issues. So if you keep coloring and you just don't like the look of it, I encourage you to stop for a minute or so, let it dry some, and then go back to it. If it gets oversaturated, you're going to have problems with bleeding and it just doesn't help anything. So let it dry some and then come back to it. You don't want to scrub with the tip of your marker for two reasons. One is the tips of these are gentle and they can be damaged. So you want to color with a really light touch if possible. The other reason you don't want to scrub or have your paper oversaturated is because it can start to pill up your paper. The surface of your paper can roughen up and that's not good either. So like I said, if it gets starts to get real, real saturated, let it dry a little bit, come back to it and that will help. You want to keep a wet edge. And what that means is always keep part of your project wet. That's gonna help with the blending. So I wanna give you an example. This one right here is the only one on any of my samples that I didn't have a wet edge when I came in and added that Daffodil Delight color. And you can definitely see that that did not blend very well. So if you keep your project wet, if you keep that wet edge, it is going to help with the blending significantly. The caps, you always want to make sure this cap snaps, okay? Snap the cap before you're done and make sure that those are on tightly. You do not want your markers to dry out. And here is a fun tip. We have a Wink of Stella brush, glitter brush, that, here I'll work this right here. If you use this with our other inks, it will cause it to blend with Stampin' Blends. It does not. So that's kind of a fun way to add a little bit of shimmer to your project. And you don't have to worry about it bleeding on anything colored with these blends markers. Okay, so let's, now we are going to come back and do a little bit more with this leaf right here. Now, I don't know if this is still wet or not. It is a little bit. I don't know if it's still wet enough to work with. So I'm gonna give it a quick coating of this Daffodil Delight. And then I want to talk about a few ways to lighten or darken a project if that is what you want to do. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about darkening. And you saw what I did. So you can come in with the deeper color of the same color, or you can come in with actual deeper hues, different hues of color. So the oranges and the reds to darken it. The other thing you can do, which I really like to do, and I do it quite a bit, is use either tans, browns, or grays to add them in. So that was our dark crumb cake, I believe. Now I'm going to come in, back in with this dark Daffodil Delight and reapply color and get that blended in. I know I've mentioned a couple of ways to blend after you add your dark color. One thing that I find really helps, if it is a solid line of a dark color, I just go over that line first with my lighter color. Let it sit for a minute. If you let it sit a little bit, it sort of softens it up and starts to blend on its own. Okay, so those are two ways to darken your projects. Now, let's say you want to lighten your projects. You can use a lighter marker, for example. So let's bring this light Daffodil Delight in 
And I'm going to try to work on some of the tips of this leaf with this marker. And as I do this, it's going to push some of that color out of this area and lighten them up. Okay. I'll do it a little bit down here where it's darker and maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Okay, so that had been about as dark as that surrounding area. So now it's a little bit lighter. You can also, if you want to lighten up part of your project, bring in a brighter color. And yellow is one a lot of times I bring in to brighten a project. So that's why I had tried it on this flower right here. But because it wasn't all wet, it just didn't work out very well. But yellow is a great color to add while everything's still wet to brighten things up. The other way to lighten your project is with the color lifter. And this is a colorless pen and I want to show you how it works. So this does a few things. It can lighten a project, part of your project. So I'm going to work, I'm going to use this on those same areas. I just used that yellow and try to lighten them up even more. So I am starting pressing heavier at the tip. And as I come back to where I want it to blend, I am giving it a softer touch to kind of feather it out, lighten it up a little bit. The pressure, lighten up the pressure. Okay, and see how that is taking some of that color out of the tip. I'll do it again up here. So this does remove color. It can also push color if you want it to push and move it around and it can blend colors. So as far as pushing color, this is fantastic and I need to show you this. So I have a small area here. There are two of them where I came outside the lines and right here, right there. So you can start on the outside of your project out here in the white space, put your marker tip to the paper and push it to the line on the edge of your image. And this is going to push that color back in. So this is amazing. Like I said, there were lots of imperfections in my samples that I've been showing you. I did not come in with my color lifter to fix them. I fixed a couple, but I purposely did not fix some of the other ones. I wanted to show you how this works. So with just a little bit of time and this color lifter, I can solve all these places where I came outside the lines. So if you're not always good at coloring inside the lines, don't worry because the color lifter will save you and you can basically erase those mistakes. The other thing you can do with this is to blend colors. And the way I used it to blend colors in these samples was on these birds. So see, I, I used a Calypso coral marker on its breast. Then I was using pool party markers up higher. And I was afraid that if I started trying to blend those together, it was going to turn to brown and that's not what I wanted. So I used one stroke of Calypso Coral, then I had the pool party, and I came in here with my blender, and I'm sorry, my color lifter, and just did one pass down through there. And then I just let it sit, and as you let it sit, the color is going to change. This is the case on all of your projects. As it dries, it's all going to change and look a little bit different. So as it lifted some of the color out on the edges. It all just sort of blended together. I'll also show you where I use this color lifter on the lipstick. So I used a dark color on the edge of the lipstick and the center of these were all the same color. 
Then to get this highlight right here on the front, I came in with my color lifter and on this one, I just did one pass straight down and I let it lift that color up. On this one, I did one pass straight down and then I lightened up as I moved outward and got the faded effect. So if you are ordering any of these blends, I really encourage you, you're going to want the color lifter. If you're looking at all the colors thinking like, wow, these are really cool. I want to try some, but I'm not sure where to start. I would encourage you to start with some greens, some yellows, some browns or grays. You definitely want the color lifter. And then I would encourage you, flowers are really fun to color. So some kind of flower colors, whatever your favorites are, purples or pinks or reds. Um, if you want, you could just start with one pack and a color lifter, and that would allow you to get started. But if you really want a few more options, I would encourage you to add in a couple other colors as well. Let's talk about how I store these markers. This is our storage by Stampin' Up, and I can't, I didn't want to turn my camera to show you the way they're stored right here on my work surface, but this gives you a really good idea. So we have these Stampin' Blend storage trays. Each tray stores six markers or three sets. They come with five trays, and then you can order more, and they are stackable, so then you can stack more on top. Then you can choose whether you want the flat lid on top or the little storage area. So that is really nice to store these markers. You want to store them horizontally. You do not want to have them up and down anywhere in a cup or anything, because that's going to cause all of the ink to sink down because of gravity. And then it's only going to be in one of your tip instead of both of them. Let's talk about a couple of other uses for Stampin' Blends besides just coloring in stamped images. You can use these on specialty papers. So here you can take designer paper and you can color in some of that space and blend it to give, you know, get a different unique paper that may be more fitting for your project. So they're really great for designer papers. You can also use these specialty ones. So window sheets, you can stamp an image on one side of a window sheet with stays on ink. You want to use your stays on ink, then flip it over to the other side. You can color that image with your blends. Now I will mention blending does not work the same on these specialty papers because they don't absorb the ink the way a regular paper does. So here are a few of my samples. I had tried blending on the vellum and I, you can probably see it, it doesn't quite work because when you add your second color, it just picks up the other color. So blending doesn't work the same, but you can use them just to color on the window sheets, foil papers, and vellum. I love the vellum. I just love that. It's beautiful. So you can use them to color these other papers. You can also use your Stampin' Blends to color embellishments and ribbons. So you can take your basic rhinestones or your basic pearls or your basic gold glitter enamel dots are the ones I have right here. Add some color to that. You are going to need to let it sit for a minute, but that will dry. And then you have new colors of embellishments you did not have before. Same thing with ribbons. You can use white ribbon and get any color you want, or you can use other colors like this linen thread. I just love this braided linen trim. Color it, and now you have a much wider selection of tools in your toolbox or embellishments in your embellishment box that you can use on your projects. Okay, so I think that is about it. I do plan to do more upcoming videos on more specialized uses for the blends. We'll talk a little bit more about coloring techniques and the, you know, circular coloring versus the feathering. We'll talk about some of that. 
and ways to make really unique projects with these. Before we go, one thing I want to tell you is when you get these, I want you to go into using them with the attitude that you're going to want to practice some. So there are a lot of people like me who love these markers from the moment they touch them. Okay, that was me. There are lots of other people like me like that. But for some, you're not going to get a perfect result when you first start. So understand that. I still don't get perfect results and I've been doing this for years. So keep that in mind. You want to go into it with the attitude of practicing. So do what I did. Stamp the same image a few different times on different types of paper. Try different techniques and as you go along and play with it, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn what you prefer and what works best for you. So I wish you the best. I really encourage you to try these markers because they're amazing. If you have any questions, please contact me. You can find more ideas and inspiration on my blog at scrappingstampingandstuff.com. And I hope to see you again next time for another video.